Hello guys and welcome to the third part of the Orchid Collection update for the spring of 2020. So in this uh, three part I'm going to show to you the orchids that I have in my bathroom and uh, some that are in my balcony and then I will go to the first office. I don't think I will uh, get to the second office but anyway there i have only about five or six orchids so you won't really miss much so here in the left i'm doing a little experiment i cut off the spikes from um, my uh, phalaenopsis um, from my phalaenopsis harlequin and i put them in this uh, glass vase which i hand uh, painted myself uh, in a vitriol uh, manner um, so uh, i wanted to see if they will continue to grow buds and uh, to be quite honest uh, they did you can see them here and uh, I am really curious if they are going to blast or they are uh, really going to bloom. So um, I will keep an eye on that. Let me try to close the flashlight. Okay, so um, here in my bathroom I uh, have um, only orchids which uh, love uh, cooler air and uh, a lot of moisture. Uh, so here I have a Miltoniopsis orchid which uh, is uh, recovering. Somehow I managed to kill off some of her roots but uh, she's okay. She does have some of them. I didn't uh, really kill them off uh, as per se. And um, there in the back she does uh, have a little uh, growth which uh, is giving uh, me hopes. Let's see which one this is. This is the Miltoniopsis red tide. Oh yeah, she was planted in um, um, some uh, organic uh, soil um, or bark chips and um, at some point uh, they did uh, decompose. So I should have uh, moved her either into bark media, either into semi-hydro. Now uh, I do have problems with uh, uh, growing them in um, organic uh, media because uh, those uh, are going to decompose and need changing. They need uh, a lot more care from me and uh, quite honest I do prefer this uh, semi-hydro system. So I moved her here. Uh, some of the older roots did uh, die in uh, this uh, setup because they just didn't adjust to it which is kind of to be expected and um, she is doing good as you can see the suit bulbs are plump. She doesn't have have a lot of pseudobulbs but uh, she is getting there so she's a happy plant. Next to it I have this uh, huge Miltoniopsis Patricia Marilinars. This is a gorgeous uh, Miltoniopsis orchid which uh, quite honestly adapted very very well in my environment. She has so many directions of growth. Uh, this is going to become a bush in the next two years. I think she has uh, three directions of growth. Um, I have lots of uh, spikes uh, starting to grow here. This is her season. She always blooms in uh, this uh, time of the year. You can see they are receiving a lot of sun here. Um, I do kind of like uh, to have uh, the windows uh, made because uh, I do believe that uh, they uh, disperse more light. So uh, she is doing uh, really, really great. Here I have another spike. I'm not uh, even going to try to count them all because uh, um, I, uh, I prefer to let them grow. Next to it, I have uh, another Miltoniopsis. This is the Miltoniopsis Hara Alexander. Now, I love a lot this orchid and she is uh, very, very healthy. I have two spikes with two blooms, which uh, I have another one here starting. You can see it uh, because of the light. Um, this one is so, so fragrant. And although this is not a mass blooming, she does have a, a decent number of... Um, uh, spikes and uh, she's healthy. When I have received this orchid, she didn't have uh, all that many pseudobulbs or no roots. Actually, she didn't have any roots. She adjusted very, very well in uh, semi-hydro, but you can see the pseudobulbs are still rather small. Now, uh, she is getting healthier and healthier and uh, year after year, she is just going to bloom better and better. Okay, let's put her back in here. 
Okay, and this is my nail eyeliner. It is the normal variety. Uh, last year, uh, I don't have this uh, guy for a lot of years. Um, he only is in my collection for, I think, one year and a half. I have received him uh, in uh, organic media with no roots. Uh, and uh, last year, um, he did adjust a bit, but not uh, too much. I put him uh, in um, organic uh, media uh, uh, from uh, Gradinar that uh, raw, and uh, it didn't uh, really adjust all that well, um, mainly because this is a fussy orchid. So, um, I think about six months ago, I have transferred it into semi-hydro and um, about one and a half months ago, I put it uh, here in my uh, bathroom and um, recently I uh, started to see that he is really picking up growth, he is putting up new growth, he is putting up roots, healthy roots, not tinted ones, not sickish ones, really, really healthy ones. So um, he is recovering, he is doing well and uh, I'm sure that in about two years he will uh, be fully established because they are growing slow and uh, they are fussy little orchids. Anyway, you can see I do have some markings on the leaves. Um, I, um, I had a spider mite infestation last year and uh, that is that. Uh, the leaves uh, are going to remain uh, damaged, but uh, he is doing all right. Okay, and next here we have uh, in my balcony a Phalaenopsis uh, species. Let me grab her ID. This is the Phalaenopsis Princess Kaiulani Mikin. I know, I'm not really sure why my phone doesn't want to automatically focus. Um, I moved her into water culture about uh, two months ago. She's doing great. Now I have a, a lot of uh, issue with this orchid uh, during the years. Uh, even though she does uh, not uh, seem to be, she is quite an old orchid. She, uh, I have her for about four or five years actually. And uh, during the years I did stress her a lot, but now she is better. Uh, she has sensitive roots to dry air and um, to salt. So what I'm doing it is uh, keeping her into water culture, which uh, does seem to make her grow better. And uh, in the past few days, I started to spray every morning the roots uh, from the top with a bit of water because I want to hydrate them and uh, encourage them to go into the uh, water. She is doing okay, as I said, and uh, hopefully soon enough we are going to see a spike uh, poking up through the leaves. Next to it, it is the Phalaenopsis bellina, which is growing very, very well. She is growing a secondary spike in here. Her roots are doing great. She adjusted very, very well into semi-hydro and then into water culture. Now all my um, orchids are, uh, or my Phalaenopsis orchids are into water culture because they just grow better. Next to it, I have two divisions of uh, Paphiopetalum orchids, which are from this one, this, um, this one um, because uh, they were growing up uh, on the media I couldn't uh, really uh, keep uh, the base moist enough so they uh, grow uh, well uh, the roots because the roots don't like uh, dry air now you can see that uh, they do have this uh, weird uh, infection let's say but I have been told that is to be expected on uh, on um, Paphiopetalums and on uh, Fragmepidums. So uh, I am just going to listen to more experienced people in these orchids. Here I have a Cattleya hybrid, which um, I seem to have lost uh, the ID. He is recovering quite well. Next to it, I have a division which I have received from a friend, the Dendrobium polar fire. Now this guy, even though it's a uh, it is so small, um, it's growing well, and uh, in the past he bloomed, so um, we are happy with that. 
here I have an African violet which finally grows uh, well for me. I seem to have uh, gotten the hang of it and you can see how big and luscious uh, he is. He is growing here in the back and uh, once in a while I am just turning it. I have some Dr. Um, uh, soil media and uh, I put some perlite in there. He seems to love it so um, I'm just let it, uh, I will just let it be. Here is the Phalaenopsis violacea, which uh, is growing a secondary spike in here. You can see, and the old one there, she is growing some uh, new roots. The older ones did digest well. Again, I have received this orchid about one and a half years ago from um, orchids and more with no roots, so uh, she did uh, adjust it pretty, pretty well. Next to it, I have the Phalaenopsis that I got from my mom, doing really, really well, a mini fall, which again adjusted well into water culture. Here in the back, I have a Phalaenopsis hybrid, and uh, yeah, it's uh, doing all right. He has tinted leaves, really love these ones, and some spikes, no ID one. And here, unfortunately, I seem to have ruined the design on my glass face, but um, let's look at the orchid. A red Phalaenopsis, a rare one actually, doing quite, quite all right, growing a cake in there, which I'm going to remove soon enough, after I hydrate a bit more the roots. It is a bit uh, dehydrated at the moment because the level of water dropped too much, but uh, other than that, you can see it's uh, growing rather well. It's growing a new root in there, so I just need to uh, lift up uh, a bit the um, uh, level of water. In here I have a division from uh, my Cattleya Chiania Ocean Tree, which is the idea of uh, that guy there too. Um, I have uh, separated the orchid because um, I wanted to give a better chance for the roots to adjust. This is a kind of sickish orchid, I'm not sure if uh, it's a disease per se or it's a bad uh, DNA, but uh, anyway the blooms are gorgeous and so fragrant, so uh, when I have received this orchid she suffers from calcium deficiency and you can see she is not fully uh, recovered uh, per se, so um, I'm trying to spray on the root uh, every day and um, on the media to see if I encourage new growth because uh, she might have other diseases as well. But we are trying to save her, that is the way I have received it about one year ago. Next to it I have the Cattleya Tip Mali, the Cattleya Alma Key Tip Mali. Uh, this is a very very nice orchid, it's quite a big one but um, I managed to sunburn her last year so uh, she's um, um, not really looking all that great on the on the leaves, but uh, it's all right. I have uh, a lot of new growths, as you can see. I think she should uh, get into a bigger pot, so um, I might uh, do that uh, this year or maybe next year. I'm not uh, really all that sure yet. But she is growing okay. She has a lot of roots. Only the leaves uh, don't look all that great, but. Yeah, sometimes uh, we do get uh, these ones as well, especially when you put your orchids outdoors and you don't uh, shade them properly. Okay, so all these guys uh, are not living here, but they are living uh, here on the topest shelf. I just uh, cannot uh, properly reach them. So I'm uh, putting here for a display for you. This is the Dendrobium Green Elf, which is uh, finally growing for me more uh, shoots at a time. He has four uh, new shoots, you can see three in here and one in here. Doing okay, finally he seems to have stopped uh, blooming because for the past two years he has been growing uh, continuously spikes and um, at some point he did got a fungal disease, I think. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't seem to have any more of those uh, spots. The leaves are okay. This was the shoot which was affected. And now I think I see a mark on the uh, cane as well. 
But uh, that is fine. I'm going to watch uh, uh, for this uh, new shoes and um, I might need to report it. Maybe I have some dead roots. I'm going to watch him. But he's, uh, he is growing very, very nice. And the last one, it is uh, the Phalaenopsis ivy that I got from my boyfriend, uh, growing very, very nicely. Not really show, sure how to show it to you, but um, there you go. She has been in bloom for the past three or four months, uh, still uh, going strong, has very, very healthy uh, roots and leaves. There you go. Until about two months ago, she was uh, in uh, semi-hydro, moved her into water culture. Some, um, some roots uh, did die because I snapped them, so uh, it was to be expected, but now she seems to be stable. So right now, she's a happy orchid. Next, in the cool room, we have here the Zygopetalum orchid last year. Uh, she did uh, got these marks and she has lost a lot, a lot of the uh, leaves, but um, she is pushing up two new growths here at the base, I can see. Sorry. And uh, I'm going to cut off all these dead leaves. I am trying to keep it more moist. This is a cool place. It is a bright place, so I think she's happy. Um, this is the gorgeous... Uh, Dendrobium. I will put the name on the screen. Um, I have uh, reported it uh, during this winter because I have seen uh, it was continuing to grow, but um, it um, didn't like the old setup. And uh, because uh, it was in the growth mode, uh, I think it has adapted really, really well into self-watering into semi-hydrosoil. This is the dendrobium, the orange one. And uh, let me show you something. This is a very, very happy orchid. It has rooted here very, very well. And uh, he didn't produce any more uh, side cages in my care, so I think uh, it is doing very, very well. I will put it here because I need to dump the water out. The dendrobium there in the back, it is the dendrobium anosmum. Um, it has uh, started to grow, but uh, I don't think I'm going to see any blooms this year. It doesn't have any nobions. Next, we have the dendrobium spring smile. Lovely paradise here. Uh, this orchid loves to grow in um, in self watering in semi hydro, and as you can see, it is full full of buds in various stages. Now at this point, I will not cut this old spy this old. Uh, uh, canes because I think he might uh, produce some more blooms because he does have some nubbins which are not used. Last year he did suffer from spider mites. We can see here the marks. But uh, this year he is clean. Anyway, I'm going to do next um, week a uh, preventive treatment on all of them because this is the season where the uh, outbreak usually begins. The dendrobium... Um, guys, I don't remember the names of my orchids anymore. I need to post more of them. The dendrobium speciosum. Um, it did produce this huge cane this year, but no spikes, so maybe next year. Um, this is the dendrobium that I received from my grandmother. Uh, it is the purple one, the Comet King. And uh, I think it's uh, doing okay. It has produced a cakey and... Uh, yeah, I... Uh, if she did g gave me only this one, so... Uh, I think it is going to do okay. Uh, this is the one from Equahenera, another nobile type. It's starting to grow here at the base, you can see, I hope. 
There we go. I'm uh, having troubles to film with the gloves because uh, they touch the screen. But yeah, it's doing okay. No blondes this year as well. This one, uh, it is the uh, something king. Don't remember really all the name, but uh, he's doing really, really okay here and is full, full, full of nubbins. I do seem to have a lot of success this year with them, with the ones which uh, are in my care for at least one year. These are all purchased from um, Secret Garden, the ones which uh, have a lot of blooms. So yeah, I'm really excited to show it to you in about one and a half months in full bloom. Uh, here we have a cakey which is also starting to grow a new shoot. Um, it is the Dendrobium Oriental Smile Aurora. And the that one was the Paradise. Okay, um, I have a butter one cake from a friend and uh, you can see that I do have a lot of new roots and a new growth so I'm quite happy. Next to it I have a Symbidum which uh, surprisingly enough is not growing in um, semi-hydro. I just put it in uh, bar chips with uh, some um, sphagnum moss. It uh, did bloom uh, this uh, winter and uh, Right now it's growing some new shoots and I think next year I will have a massive, massive blooming because I have a lot of new growths. This is a orange one. I'm not sure if I ever uh, showed uh, this one to you. And next to it, it is the white uh, dendrobium. I only kept this part because the uh, this was a cake. Um, the old orchid uh, seemed to be infested with a virus, so I just throw it out. And here we are at the big office, the one with a gorgeous light. And I will start from this one. This is the gorgeous Vanda Tiger. Uh, something tiger something i don't remember all the id uh it is doing really really well uh it has rooted uh, herself very very well in a uh, cell in a uh, water culture i grew it in uh, this glass vase and um at first if you remember she didn't have all that many roots but uh now um as you can see she has produced two cakes which are growing every single day hope you can see that and she has a lot a lot of fruits inside and outside the glass vase next we have the Lelia purpurata variety in color for the first time this season she has produced um, three new suit bulbs now uh, I have moved it uh, for about two months here and uh, in my balcony she didn't have enough light. So the new suitables are not all that big but uh, it is a new start. Only one or actually only two of them uh, has produced sheets as you can see. So here we have a big sheet which uh, I am confident it will bloom. The second one and the third one doesn't have any because it's quite a small suitable but uh, I am delighted that uh, she produced it. Here we have the gorgeous um, Iwanagara Apple Blossom Pink. Now she does have some spikes, but uh, they are not uh, going to be very, very big because uh, She has been stressed when I have moved her here. I have dropped it and a lot, a lot of uh, uh, roots have died. So uh, last year she just uh, rooted herself back. She's into this uh, very, very big uh, pot, as you can see, in uh, self-watering. Next to it, it is a Phalaenopsis Sogo Euclidean, which uh, right now is doing great, is uh, producing uh, a lot of uh, branches as you can see she's actually 
recovering from a, a trips infestation, but I got it early. They did the scratch, as you can see, a lot of the branches and they, uh, the tip died. But after uh, that, um, she find herself uh, the strength, the strength to push new branches. So this, um, these marks are from uh, the trips infestation. But I am very proud of her. She uh, hasn't been reported. I bought it, uh, I think, uh, last spring, and um, she she kept uh, growing and blooming, and uh, I didn't had a chance. But I might actually report her into water culture because you know that is my preferred uh, media or growing uh, method for them. Next to it, we have the um, Oncidium Sherry Baby. I bought it here because it's so, so big. And um, it is uh, finally doing better, but I need to move it uh, into the other room because uh, this one is just too warm for it. I think I have about 30 Celsius here or more uh, when the light hits the window, so uh, that's quite a lot. This is a Vanda Orchid, which is potted. I have received it from a friend and um, it has recovered very, very well when I have received it. It didn't have any uh, roots or uh, not a lot of them anyway. And uh, I think uh, she is doing quite well right now. Next to it, we have the uh, purple vanda, which uh, is growing very well in this setup. It has one cake here and another one here at the base and she is pushing up uh, a lot of new leaves and uh, she has bloomed for about three or four times last year all these uh, marks purple marks are from the sunlight because uh, we have a lot a lot of sunlight here this is the purple um, look a cat <laughs> This is the purple cattleya, which has been in bloom uh, in my apartment. I have brought it here because, again, it is a big orchid. Next to it, we have a dendrobium orchid, which uh, I didn't have time to report last year. And I, uh, right now I am waiting for uh, new growths because I want to have new roots before I move it into semi-hydro. Next to it, it is the Katya Chief uh, Sweet Orange, pushing up here at the base a new growth. Doing really, really well. Here it is the Vanda uh, Pachara Delight. Again, doing very, very well. Finally, moved it a bit more back uh, from the light because. Uh, she was getting uh, dry too fast and uh, I'm not at this office uh, all that often. Next to it, it is the Vanda Mandarin pushing up a, um, a cake at the base and uh, hopefully soon some roots because I have divided it and uh, all those roots are dead. I need to cut them only. These from the top are alive. But she is doing okay. Next to it, it is the Cattleya uh, Emperor Green, I think. Uh, I have saved it. Uh, when I have purchased it, it didn't have uh, any roots nor new growths, but uh, uh, it is doing okay right now. This is the newest growth and hopefully soon enough we are going to see a new one. This is the sad looking BC yellow bird. Now I need to report this one because uh, she is suffering. I think she has been infested with um, Fusarium now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we can see we have a lot, a lot of dead roots, and uh, she's also a bit wobbly in the pot. So I'm going to divide her and report her, give her a new start. Here it is the newly brought. Um,
This is the Katla Gaskeliana, which uh, grew last year a seed pot, and uh, now it has uh, about four new growths, as you can see. Um, I can say that I won't ever let uh, an orchid grow a seed pot because I have no intention to uh, work with uh, seeds and. Uh, the orchid stalled for a whole year after that, so um, I will just let it bloom and uh, if uh, it uh, ever self-pollinates it, um, I will just cut it out because I want the orchid to bloom. I don't, I am not interested in seeds. This is a gorgeous orchid from Schwerter. It is the Chianti Lodison Summer Beauty. It is the pink one with a white lip, so, so fragrant. And uh, I can see she is loving uh, this new setup here in the office. I'm not sure how it's called, this little tree, but I think it kind of likes it here. I do at least. Next, in the cool room, we have here the Zygopetalum orchid last year. Uh, she did uh, got these marks and she has lost a lot, a lot of the uh, leaves, but um, she is pushing up two new growths here at the base, I can see. Sorry. And uh, I'm going to cut off all these dead leaves. I am trying to keep it more moist. This is a cool place. It is a bright place. So I think she's happy. Um, this is the gorgeous um, Dendrobium. I will put the name on the screen. Um, I have uh, repotted it uh, during this winter because I have seen uh, it was continuing to grow, but um, it um, didn't like the old setup and uh, because uh, it was in the growth mode, uh, I think it has adapted really, really well into self-watering, into semi-hydrosoiling. This is the Dendrobium, the orange one. And uh, let me show you something. This is a very, very happy orchid. It has rooted here very, very well. And um, he uh, didn't produce any more uh, side cages in my care, so I think uh, it is doing very, very well. I will put it here because I need to dump the water out. The dendrobium there in the back, it is the dendrobium anosmum. Um, it has uh, started to grow, but uh, I don't think I'm going to see any blooms this year. It doesn't have any nobions. Next, we have the dendrobium spring smile. Lovely paradise. Here. Uh, this orchid loves to grow in uh, in self-watering, in semi-hydro. And as you can see, it is full, full of buds in various stages. Now at this point, I will not cut this old spy, this old uh, uh, canes, because I think he might uh, produce some more blooms, because he does have some nubbins, which are not used. Last year, he did suffer from spider mites. We can see here the marks but uh, this year he is clean anyway i'm going to do next um, week a preventive treatment on all of them because this is the season where the uh, outbreak usually begins the dendrobium um, guys I don't remember the names of my orchids anymore. I need to post more of them. The Dendrobium speciosum. Um, it did produce this huge cane this year, but no spikes, so maybe next year. Um, this is the Dendrobium that I received from my grandmother. Uh, it is the purple one, the Comet King. And uh, I think it's uh, doing okay. It has produced a cakey and uh, yeah, I, uh, she did gave me only this one. So uh, 
I think it is going to do okay. Uh, this is the one from Equahenera. Another Nobila type. It's starting to grow here at the base. You can see, I hope. There we go. I'm not having troubles to film with the gloves because uh, they touch the screen. But yeah, it's doing okay. No blooms this year as well. This one, uh, it is the uh, something king. Don't remember really all the name, but uh, he's doing really, really okay here and it's full, full, full of nubbins. I do seem to have a lot of success this year with them, with the ones which uh, are in my care for at least one year. These are all purchased from uh, Secret Garden, the ones which uh, have a lot of blooms. So yeah, I'm really excited to show it to you in about one and a half months in full bloom. Uh, here we have a cakey which is also starting to grow a new shoot. Um, it is the Dendrobium Oriental Smile Aurora and the that one was the Paradise. Okay, um, I have uh, bought a uh, one cake from a friend and uh, you can see that I do have a lot of new roots and a new growth so I'm quite happy. Next to it I have a Cymbidum which uh, surprisingly enough is not growing in um, semi-hydro. I just put it in uh, bark chips with uh, some um, sphagnum moss. It uh, did bloom uh, this uh, winter and uh, Right now it's growing some new shoots and I think next year I will have a massive, massive blooming because I have a lot of new growths. This is a orange one. I'm not sure if I ever uh, showed uh, this one to you. And next to it, it is the white uh, dendrobium. I only kept this part because the uh, this was a cake. Um, the old orchid uh, seemed to be infested with a virus, so I just throw it out. So, alrighty guys, this has been the update for the spring 2020 on how my orchid collection is doing. Now, do keep in mind that I have uh, jumped over the uh, five or six orchids that I have in my uh, second office. Um, I just can't uh, reach uh, that place at this time, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or any suggestions for uh, future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.